Hello and welcome back to Thermodynamics 2 Tutorials with Maria. We're going to be solving a jet engine problem. We have a jet aircraft that is flying at 280 meters per second and an altitude where the atmospheric pressure is 55 kilopascal and a temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius. We have a compress compressor ratio of 14 and the maximum temperature is going to be 1450 Kelvin. At the inlet, of the jet engine, a diffuser increases the pressure and brings the relative air velocity, which is relative to the aircraft, to zero. We are first asked to find the temperature and the pressure at the inlet of the compressor and then to find the exit velocity. This is what our process diagram looks like and we're going to start by drawing our TS um, graph. What is happening is that the fluid is going to enter at 1 and then it's going to get expanded in the diffuser. The velocity is going to go, it's going to decrease, and due to the Bernoulli equation, we're going to have an increase in pressure. So we're going to go, in this case, with a constant entropy up in temperature. Then we're going to go to, through the S-entropic compression in the compressor. Then from 3 to 4, we are adding heat at a constant pressure. Then we are going to go through the isentropic expansion in the turbine. And in a jet engine, the power produced by the turbine is just enough to drive the compressor and the auxiliary equipment. So the actual network is zero. And after the isentropic expansion, the remaining hot gases are used to increase the kinetic energy by passing them through a nozzle where we're going to accelerate the flow and it's going to create a truss. So the exit velocity is going to be much faster than the inlet, so it's going to make the aircraft move. So in our TS diagram, we're going to go back to one. This is what our TS uh, diagram looks like. And now we can see what are the values that are given in our problem. We have a velocity, we have velocity of 280 meters per second. And we know we have an atmosphere, atmospheric pressure of 55 kilopascal and a temperature of minus 18. So that is at one. So the pressure at one is gonna be 55 kilopascal. And the temperature at one is gonna be minus 18 degrees Celsius. Then we have a compressor ratio, so RC is going to be 14. And then the maximum temperature at the inlet of the turbine, so after the heat addition, is going to be, so T4 will be 1450 Kelvin. In order to solve for the temperature at 2 after the diffuser, we can start by writing the energy equation of the diffuser. We know that the potential energy can be neglected throughout the whole system. Therefore, the energy equation of the diffuser is going to be the kinetic energy at 1 plus the entropy at 1 is going to be equal to the kinetic energy at 2 plus entropy at 2. Another thing we know is that we have an inlet and outlet velocity, but otherwise the kinetic energy in the system can be negle neglected besides the inlet in the, of the diffuser and the outlet of the nozzle. So the kinetic energy at 2 can be 0. And we can solve for the equation of the kinetic energy. It's going to be equal to H2 minus H1, which we can write in terms of temperature. So it's going to be equal to Cp T2 minus T1. And this is nice because B1 we know is 280 minutes per second. Cp we know. T2 is what we want. And T1 we know it's going to be minus 18 degrees Celsius or 255 Kelvin. If we solve for temperature at 2, we're going to find it's going to be equal to temperature at 1 plus B1 squared over 2Cp. And this is going to be equal to 255 Kelvin plus 21.004 kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin, uh, 280 meters per second. And we, we have to cancel out the uh, unit, so we're going to multiply this by 
one kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin over 1,000 meter square over um, second square. Uh, we're going to find a temperature two of 294.04 Kelvin. Now, if you want to look for the pressure at two, we know that from two to three, we're going through an isentropic compression and we have the compression ratio, so we can use the isentropic assumptions. Therefore, we can write T2 over T1 is going to be equals P2 over P1, K minus 1 over K. We have T2, we have T1, we have P1, and we're looking for P2, so we can solve for P2. It's going to be equals to P1 T2 over T1 K over K minus 1. And if we plug in the numbers, P1 we know is going to be 55 kilopascal. Temperature 2, which is found, so it's going to be 294.04 kelvins over T1 255 Kelvin, so our Kelvins are going to cancel out. Exponent 1.4 over 1.4 minus 1. And we're going to find the pressure at 2. 90.55 kilopascal. To find the exit velocity, we can write the energy equation at the nozzle. So it's going to be equals to H6 plus the kinetic energy at 6 equals to H5 plus kinetic energy at 5. We say that kinetic energy, so the velocity at 5, can be negligible. So we can find at velocity at 6, or the exit velocity, it's going to be equals to H5 minus H6, which is going to be equals to Cp T5 minus T6. So we don't have the temperature of 5 nor a temperature of 6. We know that the work net is going to be 0. So we, we can say that if the work net is 0, then the work of the compressor is equal to the work of the turbine. If we say that, we know it's going to be equal the work of the compressor is going to be H3 minus H2. It's going to be equal to H4 minus H5. If we write this in terms of temperature, it's going to be Cp T3 minus T2 equals to Cp T4 minus T5. Our Cp can cancel out. We have T4, we have T2. We need to find T5. And T3, we can find it because we know the compression ratio. And we, can, we know this is an isentropic compression, so we can use the isentropic assumption. So if we write the isentropic equation, we know it's going to be T3 over T2 is going to be equals to P3 minus P2 over a times exponent of K minus 1 K. And this is going to be equal to the compression ratio, k minus 1, k. So we're going to find that t3 is going to be equal to t2, which we found before is going to be 294.04 Kelvin times rc, which is 14, exponent 1.4 minus 1, so 0 0.4 over 1.4. And it's going to give us a temperature at three of 624.99 Kelvin. Now we can go back to this equation and solve for, I want to solve it here, for T5. So T5 is going to be equal to T4 minus T3 plus T2, right? Yes. So then T4 is going to be 1,450 minus T3, which, which is fine, minus 624.99 plus 
plus T2, which is, I'm going to write it here, plus 294.04. These are all in kelvins. I'm going to find the temperature at 5 of 1119.05 kelvins. Now we can write the equation for the nozzle. So we know it's going to be T6 over T5 equals to P6 over P5 exponent K minus 1 over K. P5, we already found it. P6, we know when the fluid is going to exit the nozzle, it's going to cool down at state 1 at atmospheric pressure. So we know that P6 is equal to P1. So we can write the equation for the temperature 6. It's going to be equal to T5, which is 1119.05 kelvins times P6, which is P1, so it's 55 kilopascal over P5, which we just found, which is 511.92 kilopascal. Exponent 1.4 minus 1, so 0 0.4 over 1.4. We're going to find a temperature at 6 of 591.61 kelvins. And now we can go back to our equation for the exit velocity. So we know that T6 is going to be 591.61 kelvins. We know that Cp is going to be 1.004 kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin, and again, in this case, we're going to have to convert our unit, so we're going to have to multiply times 1K, and we're going to find the velocity at 6, so an exit velocity of 1,029, 13 meters per second.